From as little as $20, your Christmas and New Year's could be filled with entertainment. We provide free-to-air decoders, smart TVs with built-in satellite receivers, tech support for all our products second to none. Find us in Harare, Mutare and Mashingo. For more information, WhatsApp us on the numbers appearing on screen now. Kesson Electronics. Grab yours today. Hello guys, my name is DJ Ola 7 Owen. We're Crowd Madond on your number one podcast show. This is the Ola 7 podcast show. The number one show in the land. And yeah, it must be the number one, the top show. <laughs> I'm joined by yet again on the spot uh, by a young man, a man on a mission who has been doing all we can, you know, to assist young footballers in high density suburbs by making their dreams come true. Uh, and also maybe come to reality as well. You know, as is also on fire through this man, and um, you know he is a former Zimbabwe national under 20 midfielder. Also represented uh, us at Kosafa Cup uh, under 20 championship in South Africa back in 2020, based in Europe. And uh, he's a Zimbabwean. You know, born Sebastian uh, Summerfield. Hi, my brother, uh, Sebastian. How are you? I'm good, bro. How are you doing? I'm all right. Good to have you on the show. Thank you, bro. Firstly, thank you so much for having me. You know, I've been actually been a fan of the show for a long time. Oh, really? Back in your day at Star FM. Now with this podcast, I've yes. been I've been listening for a long time. I, and so, I've admired you here, so I'm, I'm happy to be here. Wow. So you've been following? Yeah, I have. And you know what? Even though, like I said, you said I was born and raised in Zim. Yeah. So I was, I was within the culture always, you know, and when I moved, I, f- I sort of felt a disconnect. Yeah. So the only way I could connect back was through the music, mm-hmm. through the people. Yeah. And you were one of the people that I used to watch to, to feel back at home. Yes. Saka, ah? I'm happy. Saka, Saka, It's all good. Uh, we're going to have so much fun here with uh, Sebastian uh, Summerfield on the All of Seven podcast show. So, yeah, Sebastian, I'm glad to have you on the show. And um, have you been around or you just, uh, just landed? I literally just landed yesterday. So oh. I haven't been home for 10 months. It's been a hard 10 months not ten being months. Here. 10 months. 10 months. Ah, my man. Ah. I'm missing <laughs> my son. Hey, I've been busy. Eh? Uh-huh. So, um, yeah, most of you might know um, I play football. Um, but, yeah, it's been, it's been a tough journey recently. Yeah. A lot of you might not know I had surgery on my foot in oh. November last year. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, this was probably the, the hardest time in my life, I mm. think. These mm. last 10 months were the most grueling. Um, most of you know I was playing in Switzerland, but yes. um, now I'm actually in the UK. So You're I'm in the UK? I, I'm in the UK now. Mm-hmm. And that's just because the, the recovery for me was best there because all my doctors, all my physio was in the UK. Yes. So yeah, that's, that's basically it. Um, the football's been very tough for me mm-hmm. at the moment, you know. Yeah. Coming back from injury, I was out for eight months. Mm. So I've been had. I only had two months to get back fitness for my trials and mm-hmm. everything. So yeah, yeah, it's been it's been really hard, a very tough time. But ah, through adversity and through the storm, I still go through it. You yeah, know, yeah, us Zimbabweans, ah, nothing can stop us. <laughs> yeah, we keep going. So exactly. So you started pr- uh, playing football at the age of uh, six. Is yeah, that right? Yeah, exactly. So then, did you have an, an idea, you know, uh, of what was happening there? Ah, to be honest. No, like, it, it's a, you know what, every young boy's dream is to play football. Yeah. First first memories for every young boy is kicking a ball with their friends in yeah. the garden, on the road, exactly. everything. Yeah, in the yard. In the yard, whatever mm-hmm. it is. Um, so I remember the, I used to play with my brothers when I was two, three years old. So mm-hmm. since I was very young, I always used to play football. And then something clicked in me that, like, I like playing competitive. I like yeah. to beat my brothers. Mm-hmm. I wanted to score more goals than yeah. them. And I spoke to my parents about it and they said, look, we can play, put you in a team. Mm-hmm. So at six years old, I went to Celebration Center. They had a team there. Okay. Not remember, I can't remember the name of it, but um, uh-huh. yeah, I was at Celebration Center and I played and it was really fun. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it so much. And then I, I made a name for myself as this young white boy playing football. Yes, because yes. that's a big thing here. There's not a lot of us white people playing football. Exactly, I think true. there's only two of us, yeah. if I'm honest. There's you and... Uh, and Callum. Uh, yes, yes. So those yes. are the only two that I know of. Mm-hmm. And um, so playing at a young age and being the only white guy, was, I was always the guy who would stand out. Mm-hmm. So I was moved from lots of academies. I went to Aces, I went to Legends. But yeah, my, my competitive like spirit started at six years old and that's yeah. why I started playing football competitively. Mm. Yeah. Okay, and uh, at what point... Uh, did you realize that uh, you can actually play football as a profession? So, it, it actually came quite late, to mm. be honest with you. Like, a lot of people realize when they're 12, 13, 14 that they're going to make it. But um, yes. with me, it came at uh, 
think it was 16 or 15, 16, because that's when I got called up for the Zim under 17 trials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I went for the under 17 trials, um, I didn't make the team. That was the first like real rejection I felt. Yeah. And that was really tough for me because as a young boy, everything was going well for me my whole life. So since since six yeah. to, to 16, 10 mm -hmm. years, no one ever said no to me. I was always the top player. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now I was playing against the best people in the country. Mm -hmm. I wasn't the best. And uh, that was the first real point where I realized, ish, uh, if I want to take this football thing seriously, yep. I have to put in work. It's mm. not my talent. My talent won't take me all the way. Yes. There's hard work there as well. Hard work, yes. Sure. So, so yeah, that's at 16, to answer your question, is when I realized, like, look, if I want to make it pro, I have to, I have to work hard. Yeah, 16. And you are, you're how old now? Uh, I'm 21. 21? Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm 21. <laughs> that's 21 years. So for someone who started playing at the age of six, you know, um, I believe I would, I, would, I would say it's an inborn thing. Yeah. You know, an inborn thing. However, uh, is that what you wanted to take up as a profession or you had something different in mind? Uh, to be honest, when you're six, you don't know even what you want to eat for dinner, Ka. So it's, it's, it's <laughs> difficult. But um, I knew that football was something that was going to be in my life forever yeah. because it was something I could go to mm -hmm. outside of school, outside of family, outside yeah. of friends. Mm -hmm. It was my escape. So using that, like a lot of people use music as an escape, art as an escape, mm -hmm. uh, running, gym. For me, it was football. Oh, yeah. So football was what I could go to when I was sad, when mm -hmm. I was happy, when I was excited, whatever it was, football was always there. Mm. So from six years old, like I knew, uh, football is going to be in my life forever. Yeah, forever, yeah. Um, and at 16, when I went to those national team trials, I realized that, hey, you know what? If I want to make it pro and I want to get to the top, yeah. Like the guys before me, like the Nakambas, the Kadawares, yeah, you know, yeah. even like Benjani, mm -hmm. uh, Peter and Lovu, those guys, those legends, they put in work. Yeah, very true. And unfortunately here, like the, the system of growing up in football, the academy system, it's all individual. Mm. You know, there's no connection. There's no league system. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's very individual. Even the way you have to go outside, mm -hmm. you have to get scouted. You can't just, you can't, it's, it's. Basically impossible to make it pro from Europe from yes, Zim. Yes. I, I think there's only a handful, like Bill Antonio, for mm -hmm. example, came from Dynamo Street yeah. to Belgium. Yeah. There's only a handful of guys that went from Zim to, to Europe. Yeah. And why, why is that so, by the way? You know, it's it's difficult because you know I've played in Europe. I've since 17 I was in Europe. Yeah. So I I guess I can say I know how, what it's like to make it, but mm -hmm. the biggest thing is the lack of opportunity. Yeah. And the lack of eyes in Zim. Mm. And the biggest issue I see is that people in Zim, when they play football, they're playing football to go to SA. They're not oh, yeah. playing football to go to Europe. Europe, yeah. Their, their next they're step, eyeing South Africa. they're eyeing South Africa. Mm. And that's the biggest issue is that they're putting a, a roof over their head. Yeah. They're saying, okay, let me get, let me finish this little level of Zim and then yeah. I'll go SA and then see what happens. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be like that. Yeah. Every country should have its own setup of like, mm -hmm. you can go from SA to Europe, you can go from Zim to Europe. Yes. You know, and like, for example, the league in Senegal mm -hmm. or in Morocco, yeah. they don't say, I'm going to go to Nigeria and then go to Europe. Mm -hmm. They go straight from Senegal to Europe. To Europe, yes. So the biggest thing for me is that lack of exposure mm -hmm. and the lack of eyes on the Zim league. Mm -hmm. Even though, in my opinion, honestly, I've played against many African teams yeah. on the friendlies for Kosafa. Yeah. I've played uh, in, in Europe, I've played against Africans. Zimbabwe, I can say hand on heart has yeah. the best talent. Mm -hmm. And that's not me being biased. That's yeah. me yeah. knowing I've, I've been to the ghettos. I've seen mm -hmm. what real talent is and these guys can but, play but, football. But how did you go there? Was it in, like an individual effort <coughs> or you were scouted by someone? So, yeah, it was an individual effort. So mm. what happened was um, after my national team trials, I realized, look, playing in Zim, I'm, I'm part of the one million or two million that mm. want to play for Zim. Exactly. I have to be different and I have to be in Europe. Mm -hmm. Because I remember there was one guy who came from South Africa or something and he was automatically in the team. He was the best player, yeah. but he didn't really need to even come for the trial because he, he was exposed to South mm, Africa. Yeah. So the way I went to Europe was um, I, I created a CV. Yeah. I made a highlight video. Mm -hmm. And again, I had to pay for my CV. I had to pay for someone to come and record me. Yeah. So it was not a, it was not a cheap, it yeah. wasn't free. I had, to, I had to put in the work. I had to invest in myself. Mm. It's an investment. Yeah. So I created my video on my CV and I sent it to 3,000 clubs on 3, email. 3,000 clubs? 3,000 clubs. Yo! And it's, yo, it's yo. no word of a lie. I can pull up the receipts. Oh! 3,000 clubs all over the world. Lithuania, England, uh, Russia. Hey. You name it, I was putting my name there. Yeah. And from those 3,000, seven answered me. Seven? Seven. 
four of them said, no, you're not good enough. <laughs> Two of them said, we'll think about it. And one gave me an opportunity. Uh-huh. One guy. Which one? His name was um, Matty Patterson. Mm-hmm. And he was at Gateshead. Yeah. Gateshead FC. Um, and he was a South African. So that's why I believe he gave me the opportunity. Because mm. he used to play for Newcastle and he played for Bafana Bafana oh, as well. Yes. Yeah. That's why he gave me the opportunity because mm-hmm. he's so a young African guy wants to try and make it. Yeah. He was in my, his, his, I was in his shoes. He was yeah. in my shoes, you know? Oh. He knew what it's like to try and make yeah. it from, 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 Africa. from Africa. Yes, yes. So he gave me this opportunity and when I went there, like, obviously before I had a few trials in Belgium and Czech Republic because yes. my mom's from the Czech Republic. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know that, but that's oh. where my mom's from. Oh, yeah. And I've been to Czech and I've tried to make it there. Mm-hmm. And before I went to Gateshead and I did those 3,000 emails, I went to Belgium, where actually where our, our former skipper, Knowledge Musono, was at, at KAS oh, yes. Upin. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was on trials there. Mm-hmm. And I did really well. I was, I was 16 at the time and I trialed with the under-21s. Mm-hmm. And I, I did really, really well. But they, they said, okay, we're going we're gonna to sign you next year. Mm-hmm. And this was 2019. Yeah. So I went 2019, November. I remember it like, it was, it was amazing for me. The first time I went for a trial and mm-hmm. someone wanted me. Mm-hmm. And then the next year, obviously, was COVID. And they, they couldn't offer me a contract. Uh, COVID came. And COVID just... killed us, <laughs> ka. Hey, uh, I was well, COVID for way. the why now. <laughs> COVID for the why. They uh, killed my dreams. But yeah. then I sent my emails. And then Matty Patterson said, look, I know it's COVID, but can you come to UK? Yeah. We've got a one-week trial period. Mm-hmm. And this is the only time you can come. Yeah. I remember I told my school. Guys, I have to go. It's a one, it's a life yeah. opportunity. Yeah. And because I had felt, I had faced so many rejections before, exactly. I knew, Ka, this is my last chance. Mm. There's no other chance for this. Let me go for this one. I went for the kill. I went there and I, I just worked hard. Mm-hmm. I was run faster than everybody. Yeah. I was running longer than everybody. Oh. I was kicking harder. Wow. Tackling harder. Because for me, this was like, this is the make it or break mm. it. Yes, yes. Sure. So I did the trial. It was a four day trial, really intense. The hardest mm. trial I've ever been to. Yeah. And I remember the coach said, we'll be in touch. I came back home. Mm-hmm. This was March, March 2020. And I didn't hear back April, May, nothing. So I said, ah, that's it. I'm done. I'm hey. going to go to school and I'm going to go to university. I remember it was an evening once. I was just doing my schoolwork and I got an email from the coach. Mm. And it said to Sebastian. So I was like, okay, cool. Let's see what happens. Exactly. I opened it. It says, we're so delighted to, to offer you a scholarship at, wow. our, at our club. Wow. I remember I screamed to my mom, mama. Oh. Ah, I made it. Finally. I made it. So my mom ran to the room. We read the email. We made sure I wasn't dreaming. Yeah. And yeah, and that, that's where it kicked off. And it was just perfect timing, you know, like right place, right time is, is a so real thing. Is that the time that you went to? That's when I went. So I was, I think I had just turned 18 or I was 17 at mm-hmm. the time. I just finished school. Yeah. And I went. Then you started playing for that team. And I started playing for Gates. By my, I went by myself. No mm-hmm. parents, no nothing. Oh. Parents were here. And that was the biggest thing for me because... Growing up in Zim, you know, mm-hmm. family is everything. Yeah, so every, very true. Family is everything. So how was it like, like you know, like living away from your, your, your parents, your family? Yeah. You know, it was, that was also one of the hardest times for me mm. because it was COVID as well. Yeah. They couldn't come visit me. Yeah. So I went then in, in the time and then lockdown happened and I was there by myself, mm-hmm. training by myself yeah. at 17. And I wasn't living in a, in a student accommodation or anything. Yeah. I was living with the players mm. and a lot of them... They have their girlfriends. They have their life. So I was in the house by myself. Hey. So I had to learn to cook. I had to learn to clean. I had to learn everything. But, and obviously, I knew how to do that in Zim. It was it was second nature to me. Yeah, but yeah. doing it by yourself is different. It's different Going yeah. to the shops and yeah. buying stuff. It, you come and cook. Come and cook. You do the dishes. You do the dishes. <laughs> make sure you've got food for tomorrow. <laughs> so those type of things really like it. It made me grow up very quickly, mm-hmm. and it turned me into a man very quickly because. Yeah. There, I realized no one's going to feel sorry for you. No, one's, no one cares. Yeah. If you cook, if you're hungry, if you're tired, yeah. if you're dehydrated, yeah. that's your problem. Come and play football. We brought you here to play Simple. football. That's it. Why? 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 Because at the end of the day, these football clubs, it's an investment. Mm. You, I'm a product. Yeah. I'm not a person to them. I'm a product. They saw talent. They can develop me and sell me. They didn't care if, if I was happy mm. or if or I not. was crying or if I was missing my mom. They didn't care. For them... I was there to make their but team win. They should, man. <coughs> they should. You know what? They should, but there's millions of Sebs in the mm. world. There's millions. Unless you're Messi, yeah. they don't care. Because they can replace you in an <laughs> Unless instant. you're Messi. <laughs> Unless you're Messi or Nakamba. Or, Nakamba. <laughs> you know, and I, I learned that the hard way a yeah. few times. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure we'll get into it in my, my career in Switzerland. Exactly. But 
I learned it the hard way because um, there was a period in time where I was 17, I was turning 18. Mm -hmm. Well, I was 18 turning 19 and I had to now make a decision if I wanted to carry on with the mm -hmm. under 20s or yeah. I wanted to make the senior team for mm -hmm. Gateshead. And yeah. they were playing in the fourth division in UK, which is a high level, high yeah. level in the UK. And I remember I went there and um, my performances were very good. So that's mm -hmm. why I got selected. There was about 600 kids in the academy oh. from different age groups. 600. So, 600. so we had... We had um, under 20s A, mm -hmm. under 20 B team, under 18 A, under 18 B. Yeah. There was so many kids. And yeah. also we had a college connected yeah. as well. So mm -hmm. there was so many kids wanting to make it. And they only gave three spaces for trials for the first team. Whoa. And I was one of the three. Oh, yeah. So that was amazing for me. That was I a mean, great yeah, thing. Yeah, very true. I went there, did the trial mm -hmm. with the first team. And I was very lucky as well because during that time, um, I was called up for the under 20s mm -hmm. national team. Oh, yeah. That, that, that's the time. That's the time for Kosafa. So I came home, did my Kosafa duty. Mm -hmm. And even that was a funny story because I came home because the, it was COVID in the UK. Yeah. So my trial was put on pause with the first mm -hmm. team. And my parents said, there's no point in being in the UK. Come home. You haven't been home for exactly. about a year. Yes, yes. Come home. Came home. And I actually didn't even know there was national team trials going on. Mm. So the way I found out was I usually train with Dynamos when I'm here because yes. I'm a 7 million. Uh, <laughs> Dembare, Dembare is my team. Uh, Dembare, Dynamos. Uh, Dynamos FC is my team. Oh. I uh, have Dynamos at heart. Do you wish to play for, for Dynamos one day? I, I do. Mm -hmm. And I hope one day I come back mm -hmm. to, to Zim, to yeah. live here, yeah. and to play for Dynamos. Dynamos. And to become a Dynamos ah. legend. That's my goal. Dynamos team. Dynamos, I'm one coming. One players here. You I'm, saying, a, I'm coming. To Faro Stadium, you'll see me there <laughs> soon. <laughs> but um, awesome. I remember so I was training with Dynamos and the coach at the time Tundrain Draya yeah. he knew me already because mm. I used to play against the Dynamos all the time in friendlies with my academy yes. and also with the national team mm -hmm. I used to play against them all the time yes. and because I was in the system they knew Kuti ah Sebastian he plays mm -hmm. football so I remember I went for the Tundrain and I said look I heard there's under 20 trials um, mm. do you think I would be I could come in yeah and he said, look, I'm not the one selecting. You have to send your CV to mm -hmm. the manager yeah. and they'll choose if you're good enough or not. Mm -hmm. So I was like, geez, okay, okay, no yeah. worries. So I sent my CV and my videos. And I remember they called me to Zifa House mm -hmm. and I went there and I sat and I saw all the, the big guns there. Wow. And I was so intimidated. <laughs> I couldn't even I speak. And then they said, look, we'll give you the opportunity. Uh -huh. um, you're going to have to come into camp. It starts tomorrow. Yeah. And I just arrived. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, cool. I went I'll into come. camp. Mm -hmm. Um. And because I came late, I, there was no space for me to sleep in camp. Mm. So I had to drive home and back to, to oh, Ziva yeah. Village every yeah. day. Yeah. So I'd leave my house at 4.30 a.m. to get there at 5 because we were yeah. training 5.30. Yeah. It was three weeks of rigorous training. I've never trained like three that. Three weeks? Three weeks. And there was, I think there was 70, 80 guys in the beginning Yo. for the trial. Yeah. And in the beginning, like when I spoke to coach, and the, the staff there, they mm -hmm. all said to me, like, you know, you're just training, yeah. you're just, just to keep fit. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. I was never expecting to be selected. Mm -hmm. So we were training, training. And I remember the one day, like, they started cutting guys. Mm -hmm. And the way they did it, we went for breakfast, eating porridge, eating eggs, <laughs> sausages, whatever. <laughs> and then you just hear, Kuti, oh, player one, player two, player three, thanks, your time is over at camp. Oh. Just like that, in front of everybody. You're gone. You're gone, done. And I was like, oh, Malan. Okay, I'm the man. next year. I said, that's me. I'm done. I'm going to be finished. Yay. I remember every single morning I went, I was like, ah, I'm going to come this drive for nothing. I'm going to drive home just now. I'm going <laughs> to phone my mom and say, ah, mom, I'm coming home. Yeah. And every day I went, I wasn't, I wasn't set to go home. I mm. kept going, kept going. And then I think one pivotal thing, and this is also, you know what, advice for all the young people yeah. watching, yeah. whether you're a musician, you're an artist, mm. or you're a football player, athlete, whatever. Mm. The biggest advice I can give you is, don't put yourself in a box. When yeah. you have an opportunity yeah. like national team mm -hmm. or you're going to be on a, a global stage, don't yes. put yourself in a box. Mm -hmm. And I, I did that in the beginning. And this was because I told coach, I'm a right winger. That's my position. That's where I'm going right to play. Winger. That's it. Mm. And I remember we, we had a game against, I think, Black Rhinos or mm -hmm. something, a friendly game. Yeah. And there was, I think, 30 of us left in mm -hmm. camp. So they had cut half of the camp already. Yeah. And they had two teams. We had two teams, 15-15. And the one team was full. The second team, there was nobody at left back. There was mm. no left backs. Oh, yeah. And nobody was saying, I want to. So I said, you know what? Coach, I'm, I'm a left back. Yeah. And he looked at me. Ah, I said, you're right wing. Mm -hmm. Stop joking. He said, no, coach, put me left back. I'll, 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 do, I'll, I'll do the job. He put me there. I had my best game ever. Oh. I played so well. I don't know what it was. I played so well. Clean sheet. Wow. I, the guy on my wing, he was. He even swapped out because oh. he, he couldn't get past. Oh, yes. 
And I remember that moment, uh, Coach Tondra used me as an example mm -hmm. to all the guys because he said, look, Seba is not a, a left back, mm -hmm. but he did it but for he the nation. Exactly, he did it because exactly. we needed him. And that was, I think, the pivotal role where I made my choice like, you know what, I'm not going to put myself in a box. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do whatever the coach says yes. and what he needs. Even in defense. <laughs> Even if in, in defense. Yeah. It's not fun, but I had to do it. <laughs> So, striker, number nine. Striker, even goalkeeper will play. Ah, <laughs> no, 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 goalkeeper, ah, no. I, you never know, ka. Yeah? Sometimes, <laughs> duty calls, ka. You have exactly. to. <laughs> but um, I remember that, I think that was the moment where Coach Tony Rice said, look, I'm going to take this boy. Mm. And I, I won't lie, I'll tell everybody, I'm not the best football player. Yeah. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Talent, I'm not the best. Yeah. But I'll work harder than everybody. Mm. If I see someone who's talented, yeah. I'll, I'll go and tackle them. I'll wow. make sure that they, they're hurt. Because th that's just how I grew up. And uh -huh. playing in Zim, it, I developed this shell of, of roughness. Mm -hmm. You know, like elephant skin. Yeah. Nothing could harm me. And uh, you know what, uh, Seba? Uh, you were coached by former Zim Warriors uh, player, Alan Johnson. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the notes you took uh, from him? You know, Coach Johnson was actually one of the first coaches that took me from my from amateur competitiveness to real, like the top Zim yeah. um, youth football. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I, I was fortunate enough, I went to Harare International School. Oh, okay. So that's where I went for my whole schooling, my mm -hmm. primary school and my high school. Yeah. And uh, Alan Johnson was the coach there at the mm -hmm. time. At Harare International At Harare International. Mm -hmm. And the way he, we met was, uh, I had a physical education class, so PE. Mm -hmm. And we were just, uh, it was a football season. So yeah. our PE coach was off that day and Alan Johnson came in as a substitute. Mm -hmm. And we were playing football. And obviously I was the best in my class. I was just dribbling, scoring. And he yeah. said, ah, oh, this boy can play. So he said, this afternoon, come this afternoon for mm -hmm. football with the, the older kids. Yeah. This was when I was in grade grade six. So I was 13, 14. Yeah. I was Damn. very young. And I came that day, I was playing with 18 year olds mm -hmm. at the school. Yeah. And I kept up. Mm -hmm. I, it was no problem. For me, I was always happy to play against the older kids. So, <laughs> And the one thing Coach Johnson always said was have confidence in yourself. Oh, Believe yes. in yourself. Yes. yes. And the, I, I'm so grateful for him. Mm -hmm. he, he was a, a role model for me. For, Did you talk? I still talk to him all the time, mm -hmm. always in touch. Every time I come here, I, yeah. go, I go back to the academy, ah, train with nice, the guys. Nice. Because for me, I believe like... I'm sure he's proud of you. I, th I think he is and mm -hmm. I hope he is proud because, yeah. you know, he put in a sacrifice for us. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a handful of us who are playing in Europe now yes. from Alan Johnson's mm -hmm. academy. And he, he came in on Saturdays, you know, he, he had his family. He mm -hmm. came in on Saturdays and yeah. trained with us. Yeah. He coached us. He took us to tournaments. Mm -hmm. So if it wasn't for... For AJ, honestly, I don't think I would have gone mm. as far in my career because yeah. he was the guy who noticed me first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Before anyone else. Before anyone else. And then after that, um, parallel to being at AJ, I also went to Legends Academy, mm -hmm. which was with Coach Faraj Laiwa. Yeah. And he, for me, that's also another guy I have massive respect for because he was another coach who gave me an opportunity. Yeah. He gave me, I didn't have to pay for the academy. He said, come and play every weekend. Mm -hmm. He gave me the, the platform to, to showcase. And he was the one who actually introduced me to like highlight videos and mm. stuff, which is crazy because in the UK, there's kids young as six years old who have highlight videos and yeah, a CV. Yeah, yeah. Here, guys are only getting highlight videos. Some of our uh, Premier League players don't mm. have highlight videos. Mm. And that's going back to your original, original question. Yes. What's the issue in Zim? There's, we, we don't know the fundamentals of the business side of football. Yes. Of, yeah, of football. We've got good coaches. We've mm. got great athletes. We can run forever. Mm -hmm. But... It's that, that connection, that bridge to Europe, which is which honestly is what I'm trying to build. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to build that bridge that, from, okay. from Zim yeah. to Europe. Okay. And that's my... That's How? My, How are we going to do that? So, it's, it's very tough. It's mm -hmm. not easy. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, I'm actually at university, so I'm mm -hmm. studying sports management. Sports management? Yeah, sports that's management big. in yeah. London. Yeah, and I'm also doing a... Um, I'm getting my, my scouting and mm -hmm. my agent's license. Yeah. Oh, so, so you want to scout new talent from Zim exactly, to Europe? Exactly. Wow. So wow. I'm, a, I'm a level three scout. So I'm, I'm allowed to scout. Now? I'm allowed to scout now. And I've already started scouting. Oh. And I've kept this very low key because I don't want people now to just think, oh, Seba's going to oh, take yes, me. yes, yes. Because there's no bias for me. You can be mm -hmm. my best friend and I'll tell you the truth. Exactly. You, you're not going to make it right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. But um, my biggest thing is I want to become an agent uh, because I've been messed around by a lot of agents before, mm. especially in Europe, who take advantage of vulnerable African mm -hmm. players yeah, they, who come by they, themselves. They just take your money. They just take your money. And like, I remember I heard this terrible story once um, uh, of this player. He came from Zim and he went to, to some country in Europe. And his, 
his contract was written in the, the European mm. language, whatever it was. Exactly. And obviously he didn't know it. And the agent said, no, don't worry, I'll translate it for mm. you. In that contract, it said the agent gets 95% of his salary. Oh, 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 oh. So he was taking advantage because he was, you know, he, he couldn't speak the language. language barrier. Language barrier. Hey. So that's the biggest thing that you'll see is in football, you can't trust anybody. I had, a, I, I had an agent who was Zimbabwean. Mm. I won't say who he is because, you know what, I'm not a person to... Exactly. To, to, mm-hmm. He's doing his business good for him. Um, I, when I went to Switzerland, so after my national team here mm. in Zim, yeah. I, I did really, really well at the Kosafa. And um, my name was, was pushed out now. Mm-hmm. And this guy approached me saying, look, I've got opportunity in um, first division in Switzerland. Mm-hmm. So the Premier League in Switzerland, yeah. which is huge. Mm-hmm. Every kid wants to play in the exactly. Premier League. In Premier League yeah. I said, cool, I'm coming. I dropped everything. I dropped UK. I dropped my coach who, who first scouted me, which was my biggest mistake because I, I had an ego. I mm. won't lie, I had an ego. I said, ah, Zim national team player. Exactly. I can do now whatever I want. I can do, I can go now to yes, Switzerland. So, yes. cool. I told the coach, I'll come back. Don't worry, I'm coming back. And this is the coach who, who, who scouted me, mm. the guy who gave me the opportunity. Mm. And I told him, I'm coming back. And he never took anything like against me. He wasn't yeah. angry, but he, he always told me, Seb, just remember your roots. Mm-hmm. Don't get too big-headed. Yeah. You haven't made it. Exactly. exactly. And I said, what do you mean? I made Zim exactly. team. Now I'm going to Switzerland. I'm going to Switzerland. What are you going to say? Ego. My ego was big. I went to Switzerland. And to be fair, I, I had an ego, but I did well. Mm-hmm. All the teams wanted to sign me in Switzerland. Yeah. So I went for this uh, team. FC Zurich was mm-hmm. there. Grasshopper Zurich was mm-hmm. there. All in the Premier League. I played well there. Did my trials. And the coach looked at me and said, look, I want to take you far on the mm-hmm. 23s. And mm-hmm. I was like, look, I've made it. I'm going to play. At the time, FC Zurich was playing Europa League. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to make it. Exactly. I've, I've made it. I'm going to make it pro. And I remember I went in the Monday. The whole week I was there until Friday. Played a game Saturday. Mm-hmm. So rest on Sunday. Coach said, see you Monday. Yeah. I came back on that Monday. The coach ignored me completely. Oh, the why? coach from Zurich. And I was like, okay. All the players looked at me like, oh, okay, cool. They didn't even give me high five, oh, nothing. Oh, oh. So I said, okay, well, what happened? Like, Things just changed. On one day, what changed? Ah. The, and then I, I put on the kit for, for training. I got to the, the mm-hmm. gate for training. They didn't let me in for under 23 training. I said, guys, I'm not a new guy. I've been here a week. Yeah. You want to give me a contract? What's, What's happening? I said, you can go train with under 16. I was 19. They said, oh, go train with the 16. Six, so I said, ah, what, what's this? This is a joke. So I went for the 16s and I spoke to the coach. And I found out that the agent who I was dealing with, he was asking for money from the clubs. Ooh. I was a free agent at the time. Oh, I see, I see. The I agent see. said to them, I want X amount for Sebastian, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. And they said, right, this boy is coming. He's just asking for money, whatever. So all the teams in Switzerland, they're very connected. Mm-hmm. They all said, no, uh, Sebastian Samofit is a Zimbabwean boy looking for money. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's what happened. So it was super tough. Yeah. So was it, it uh, you know, taking a toll on you, academics and sport? How were you balancing it? Because remember, you were young yeah. from that age of six, 16, you know, mm. to the Europe now. And yeah, how I, were you balancing I, I, it? I didn't. Mm-hmm. That was the biggest thing. And that's one thing that um, I'm very grateful for my parents because they allowed me to, they allowed me to, um, to choose the football side and they allowed me to choose if I wanted to carry on the academics. So I remember... <sighs> When I left at 17, mm-hmm. the, the Gateshead team, they had their own college. Mm-hmm. So I was linked with the college anyway. Okay. That, that was great. So I, I could carry on my school there, but it was only one year. So after the one year, I did it. It was great. They said, do you want to do a master's? or like, Not a master's, but do you want to do mm-hmm. a proper university degree? Yeah. And I said, no, no, no. I want to concentrate on football. Mm-hmm. And that was my biggest mistake, that I didn't carry on school. I'm 21 now, and I started my first year <laughs> of university. <laughs> So one thing I can always suggest is always do education, mm-hmm. always have the backup. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing Coach education. AJ Johnson, Alan Johnson told me, mm-hmm. always make sure you're educated as well. Mm-hmm. Because without education, you've got nothing. Football is a short career, mm-hmm. maybe 15 years, 10 yes. years, then what are you going to do? you're done. So for me, I don't want to say it's my biggest regret, but my biggest wish was that I, I went to school mm-hmm. and I did it parallel to the yeah. football. Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm doing here mm-hmm. as well with... with um, the boys I'm, I'm sponsoring, you mm-hmm. know, uh, in, in DZ, in Mavuku, in Mbare. Mm-hmm. I'm helping them mm-hmm. with, obviously, the academy side, but I'm also helping them with the school side. And that's, that's the most important thing. And uh, what age were you, uh, you know, when you played at Kosafa? I was 18. 
18. Yeah. I was 18. I was turning 19 that following year. It must have been, you know, one of one for the books. Uh, <laughs> right? Yeah, it was. You know what? That, uh, we can talk. About, I can talk two hours about Kosav. That was the best moment yeah. for me in my life because mm-hmm. I remember getting the call up that day when um, the final 18 was selected. Yeah, and I was I was a part of that list. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember like going to my mom. I said, "This is a joke. Yeah. It can't be true." Uh, I met the team at the airport because obviously I wasn't staying. At, oh no, mm-hmm. I stayed at camp that night, and then we went together to the mm-hmm. airport. And I, I couldn't believe it. I had my one friend, um, uh, Weli Mapua. Mm-hmm. He also went there. And he okay. was my friend from Legends. Mm-hmm. So we we went on the airport, whatever. And I made... Those those guys from under 20 are still my best friends. Oh. I still talk to all of them. Na- even now? Even now. There's, there's not one guy in that team who will message me and I won't mm-hmm. answer. You know, there's this whole thing of like, just because I, I became... I don't want to say famous or mm-hmm. or known in Zimbabwe. Yeah. I think I became, I became known. Mm-hmm. Because I, I hate this term of like, uh, you're famous, famous. or whatever. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm not famous, but I have influence. Mm-hmm. That That's my thing. That's what I think. I think mm-hmm. I have influence on, on people just yeah. because of the following I've gathered and mm-hmm. just the connections I've made. Yes. Um, but I will never forget those, those Zim boys because mm-hmm. they taught me the most valuable lesson about friendship, mm-hmm. about teamwork, and about loving your country mm. you know I, being patriotic being patriotic mm-hmm. and now there's not a day I, I go without saying I'm Zimbabwean mm-hmm. if someone says no you can't be your white mm-hmm. ah, I'm Zimbabwean you're Zimbabwean I'm Zimbabwean I'm you know so for me it's like it's, the biggest thing is when people say like there's no white people in Zimbabwe yeah. or you can't be you can't mm. be Zimbabwean mm. I'll say look yes my mom's from the Czech Republic that's mm-hmm. Europe I can't say I'm European. I don't fit in that culture. Exactly. You I, are Zimbabwean. I, 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 I can understand the language. I can mm-hmm. speak it here and there. Mm-hmm. I eat the food. I, my best friends are all Zimbabwean. It's just, you know, it's for me, it's, it's I am Zimbabwean. And mm-hmm. whatever people say, they can say, I know myself. People here know who I am. Mm-hmm. So I'm happy about that. That's great. So let's just take a, a short break. I'm talking to uh, Sebastian Summerfield here on the All of Seven podcast show. We're not your average service providers. We don't just provide average fuel stopovers in Dema, Chikwana, Zico, St. Mary's, Budiriro, Glenara Avenue, and a new one coming soon to Murewa. We are beyond kings and queens of our service industries. We are bigger than most. We are giants. Giant Petroleum. Limitless energy. Welcome back to the All uh, All Seven Podcast. Show. I'm talking to um, Sebastian Summerfield here on the show. And uh, Seba, you know, before you get uh, in the field, what do you do? You know, I'm talking about uh, the preparation that comes before jumping uh, in the field. You know, uh, there's a lot to it. Mm-hmm. Nutrition. It, it all happens two days before. You know, two lot, days before. A lot of people don't realize. They think, could you just go and you just mm-hmm. play? Yeah. Some people can. Some people, it's very different for everyone. So what I'm going to tell you guys now, don't try it because mm-hmm. maybe it won't work for you. Yeah. But uh, for me, it happens two days before. It's just like what I eat, how much carbs I eat because mm-hmm. carbs are um, slow releasing energy. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'll eat a lot of pasta, a lot mm-hmm. of chicken breast. So the nutrition side is taken care of. And then the day of the game, mm-hmm. I'll be listening to Zim Dance Hall. I'll be listening to the local artists just to get... <laughs> Zim Dancer. Zim Dancer because it gets ah, me guys. in an excited mood. So it makes yeah. me happy. Oh. And I play football best when I'm, when I'm happy. Uh-huh. And it, it, I remember once I was even listening to American music and mm-hmm. I was like, ah, these guys, guys, they were just bumping it in the... <laughs> I was like, hey, ah, this stuff, I can't relate. Where's the Winky D, Silent <laughs> Killer or exactly. something like that. Yeah, but, you uh, listen to Silent Killer? Of course. Ngwere. Ah, that's my guy. But do, 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 you, do you really understand the language and the... Hey. He's you got know, deep the shona. Hey, you, exactly. the deep shona. Yeah. I can understand a few, but um, mm-hmm. so I spoke to him when he, when he came to UK. Yeah, but uh, that guy, guy, he's <laughs> deep shona is too much for me. <laughs> but but the, kwa, hey. kuf kaf, kuf kana, kuf that is no <laughs> chance. Hey. Exactly. So, um, yeah. which music do you listen to? Like, I mean, oh. an artist. I mean, uh, artist. You know, Saint Flo. I listened to Gary mm-hmm. Maponzure. Gary Maponzure. Yeah, he was he was a big big inspiration for mm-hmm. me. I listened to Takura. Obviously, mm-hmm. the big boys Ja and Winky. Ja mm-hmm. is my like a big brother to me as well. Wow, Ja. Ja Fraser. He's, ah, nice. he's honestly like uh-huh. such you've met a, before. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's a funny story. We, we we we've known each other. Like my my parents know him. Mm-hmm. 
and I've known him for quite a bit now, over yeah. three years or something. Mm-hmm. And I've met him a few times and he's just the nicest guy ever. Yes, yes. He's the nicest he's guy. Humble guy. Humble guy. And yeah. I remember once we were just driving around mm-hmm. and everyone was looking in my car like, yeah. ah, is that Jop Razor? Exactly. And I was like, yeah, it's him, guys. <laughs> I'm also a fan, guy. It's Jop, yeah. <laughs> I was a fan. Um, but yeah, so I listened to a lot of that. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I also listened to uh, Soldier Love. Mm-hmm. Jalav. Yeah. Wow. So, what, what's your favorite song from uh, Jalav? Hey, ah, there's too many, car. Mm-hmm. There's too. Look, you know, let me even pull up my my playlist. I'll show you, car. There were so many <laughs> songs I can't even hey. tell you, car. <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm like, no, yeah. you can even see. Mm. I'll show the camera if it loads. Yeah. This is my Zim playlist. Wow. Full of full Enzo of, Aisha. Enzo yeah, Aisha. Yeah, everyone's the there. <laughs> I uh, probably for Soldier Love maybe Pindirai. That's <laughs> Pindirai. Yeah, that's. Oh. I like that song. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, so let's talk about uh, you know um, uh, some rules. What are some of the you know, rules in football? Mm. Like For someone who's not a footballer, I'm sure you can learn one or two. Yeah. Yeah. So there's obviously there's the the rules by the rule book, but there's also a lot of respect in mm-hmm. football. Yeah. So th- the biggest thing for me, like, is the respect off the field mm-hmm. and also the respect to the officials, yeah. like the referees, mm-hmm. the linesmen, even to the opposition. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, for example, like some unseen rules you could see is like if someone gets injured while you're running, mm-hmm. if you're running next to someone and they get injured, yeah. you kick the ball out because it's unfair. Yes. Or if the goalkeeper has a hand injury mm-hmm. and there's an open goal, you don't score. Mm-hmm. So those are the type of things you learn just with time. Mm. Um, and also like, this is also a bit of a sad thing, but like the racism in football. Yeah, uh, racism. Racism is big. Um, Serious. And I, I faced a lot of it when I was yeah growing up in Zim. And a lot of people don't know this because I never really wanted to shed light on it. But mm, let's talk about that. It, it was it was very tough for me when I went to the UK, mm-hmm. and I saw that there's still racism towards black people. Black people in the UK and the UK, mm-hmm. and I was one to always step up and say, guys, Stop football. This. There's mm-hmm. no there's no race. There's no culture. There's no ethnic background. It doesn't matter. You can mm-hmm. be black, white, exactly. Indian, Chinese, whatever you want mm-hmm. to be. You can play mm-hmm. football. At the end of the day, we're teammates. Exactly. And um, the the biggest thing for me was. I remember we were playing a game, I can't remember where it was, a high-density area, maybe with Goro Monzi or something like mm-hmm. that. And um, we were playing and I was doing well. Yeah. And I started hearing, ah, Murungu, Murungu, whatever, mm, whatever. Yeah. And I was used to it because it was G, it was exactly. okay. And then I remember we were playing and um, I tackled the guy <laughs> and they all ran up to me. Oh. Saying, ah, oh, you were this stuff. And I was Why? like, oh, what are you, what, what's happening? <laughs> Swearing me. And I said, guys, it's just a tackle. And then I remember I, I said sorry, whatever, whatever. Exactly. And I walked away, and then someone spat on me. Mm. And they, they, oh, they spat. And I, I looked at the ref, I looked at the coaches, and mm-hmm. they did nothing. Oh. And I was like, okay, so is that okay to do in football? No. Imagine I did that, a white boy doing it to a black boy. It was going to be even it worse. It was public news. Exactly. And for me, I, I learned that you know what, with because it happened to mm-hmm. me, and a lot of people don't realize like. Yeah. Th- that it can happen to mm, white people. Mm, but like mm. when it happened to me, I'm now an advocate for like, if I see anything, mm-hmm. even if I'm sitting on the tube in yeah, London or yeah, yeah. if I see something, I'll step up because mm-hmm. in Zim, I grew up knowing there's no color. Exactly. Uh, for me, black, if, white, black, white it, it doesn't matter. Yes. For me, you're a person, you're, we bleed the same. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, we all go sleep. Exactly. We see the same sun, we yeah. see the same moon. Exactly. What's the point? It's powerful, man. So powerful. That, that's one thing for me that a lot of people think, Kuti, I, I don't like to hang out with black people, mm. whatever. My best friends are all black. Mm. <laughs> my my best friends are from the, the deep ghettos. In, in exactly. Dizem, Dizem Dizem Bare. Bare. exactly. So exactly. A, a lot of guys, and even that was a big thing when I went to Mbare the mm-hmm. first time. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember I was driving and they were all looking at me like, what's this white guy exactly. doing here? What yeah. does he want from exactly. us? Exactly. And then the, the icebreaker was playing sport. Mm-hmm. We played football. And then all of a sudden, they, were, they weren't held back anymore. Oh, why? Yeah. Because of football. <laughs> because of this sport that we kick this ball around, people say, ah, it's cool. Yeah. Doesn't matter. He's exactly. white, it's cool, but we're playing exactly. football, it's okay. Exactly. So, but do you relate well with other black guys? 100%. Here in Zimbabwe? Yes, 100%. I, I do struggle in, in the UK and mm-hmm. stuff, not because they're black, but because yeah. the culture. So mm-hmm. you could be white, black, Chinese, whatever, yeah. the culture. Mm-hmm. For me, in Zim, I'm uh, in the culture, you know, mm, like I see. with the music, with the way we speak, the way we walk, the mm-hmm. way we talk. Yeah. Uh, because I was brought up, obviously I went to a private school and international with a lot of mm-hmm. people, a lot of different races. Yeah. Uh, that was a great experience, but also because I played football. Mm-hmm. I played football with 
with local teams, not just international people. Yeah. I played with locals. So I've mm-hmm. been to Coromonsi. I went to DZ, Dombosham. I went everywhere. Yeah. I've played everywhere with mm-hmm. against everybody. Yeah. And because of that, I, I grew up learning that ha, these are my these are my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I, they're not anything different. Exactly. They don't have more. They don't have less. Exactly. Like, yes, I might have gone to a better school. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, when we play football, yeah. that doesn't matter. Exactly. Who I am, where I came from, what mm-hmm. money I have, mm-hmm. what money they have. Kicking the same ball. It's the same ball. Exactly. If he's playing without shoes, I'm playing with shoes. Mm-hmm. It's the same ball. It's exactly. the same pitch. So, mm. it that's the biggest thing. So talking about breaking football uh, rules, uh, ever broke any? <laughs> no one will know it's between no you and me. No one will know. No one will know. Uh, some football rules, you know, I used to dive quite a bit. <laughs> so I used to dive yeah. just to get the fouls and stuff. But um, exactly. no, I used to play by the, the rule book. I used to give a lot of fouls because mm-hmm. I was an aggressive player. Yeah. Um, But yeah, no, I never, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't, yeah. I, I stay away from those things. Mm-hmm. And I'm an advocate as well for like the, the drug consumption because I've, it's sad, you know, yeah. I've, I've had, players that I've played with um, at academies mm-hmm. and they were so good yeah. and they got lost in drugs and mm. yeah uh, there's even drugs. this one story of a guy who came with me to the national team mm. yeah. he didn't get selected and I, drugs? no he mm. was he was good and then after I, I tried to reach out to him say like yo how are you bro it's mm. been a long time number didn't work I remember I came back to Zim mm-hmm. and I spoke to one of my friends I was like, yeah, no, he's in the deep of Mbare. He's, mm. he's selling bronco and oh. stuff like that. And I was like, whoa. And I remember I went there to Mbare. Yeah. Yeah. And I went to find him. Mm-hmm. And he looked at me and like, I I just felt so sad Yay. that, you know, that because he didn't make, because, you know, a lot of people don't realize in Zim, people play football to escape, yeah, to, yeah. to exit yeah. the, the poverty line mm-hmm. or something. For mm-hmm. them, football is their golden ticket yeah. out to help their family, to help them generation. It's not supposed to be, you know, it's not supposed to be like that. It's not meant to be like that. Mm-hmm. And, Football has this power of changing lives, yeah. you know, and um, that's why I'm I'm an advocate for grassroots football, mm-hmm. and I I do my best with my foundation. Yeah. I go to all these high density mm-hmm. areas. Um, I I run my scholarship program yeah. where when I do my scouting tournaments, I pick four or five of the best players, yeah, and I put them through school mm-hmm. until they graduate. So, wow. and um, I also put them in a football academy, mm-hmm. and you know what's crazy about Zim, the media. Can can twist stories very very quickly. <laughs> Which media, mainstream or social media? Mainstream media <laughs> and social media as well. Like when they when they combine together, it's uh-huh. it's, it's dangerous sometimes. Mm. I remember there was a period of time where I was in the news every week, and there was the big story is um with Hillary, yeah. the, the boy I sponsor. Mm-hmm. I he lived in Domboshava, yeah. but I I moved him to Mbare, and everyone said, oh, you are moving from oil to fire to fire. And I was like, okay, let, let's see. But mm-hmm. do you guys understand why I did it? Mm-hmm. He's at Mbare High, which is one of the best oh, schools yes. in that area. Yeah. He's living with his parents in mm-hmm. a, a great house mm-hmm. away from everyone. He's Mbare? At a, in Mbare. Mm-hmm. He's at a football academy. You're paying the rent? I pay it everything. Yep. I pay everything. Mm-hmm. I pay for his school. I give him food. Mm-hmm. I, I pay for the parents as yes. well. I pay for the school fees. Mm-hmm. Um, his admission to uh, the what's it, the football academy. Yeah. And even his transport to go back to his grannies mm. in Domboshava. Oh, uh, yeah. So when he says I want to go see him, Buya, go. I'll I'll send you there. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's that's my my kid essentially. Yes. And I remember the media, the the headline. It wasn't about the football. It was mm. Sebastian moves boy from Domboshao to Mbari. Mbari. And obviously people, Kai, if you think going to so Mbari, they, they didn't go deep, you know, into the, the story was there. why you've done it. The reasons was there, but because of that headline. That story went viral and I was getting message after message saying, mm. how dare you? Who do you think you are? Mm. You're trying to blackwash. Because oh. this, this term blackwashing yes, is thrown around yes, where yes. I'm just trying to help kids of, mm-hmm. of color so I mm-hmm. look better. And every a lot of people think I, I do this charity work to look better mm. on social media. Yeah. I don't care about my followers. I don't care about that verified thing on Instagram. Maybe they can ask, why are you doing that? Why are you doing it? Because I, I've seen how it is for these guys to make it. And mm-hmm. I know how hard it was for me to make it. Mm. And I've had everything. My yeah. parents have given me everything. They've given me every opportunity. Mm-hmm. I could fly to any country I wanted to go to the trial. Yeah. These guys can't. Mm. The why am I doing it? Is because I want them to have the feeling I had mm. of that hope. Oh yeah. Because there's no hope in Makes the grassroots sense. football. Yeah. These guys are playing football just to try and make it. And mm-hmm. it's so difficult for them because they don't have that opportunity. Yes. So I'm trying to breed that opportunity. Mm-hmm. I want them, I want everyone in Zim to know me as 
Sebastian Leal is going to give opportunity. Yes, yes. I don't care about my football legacy. Mm -hmm. My biggest goals are to play for the Warriors yeah. and to bring kids from Zim to Europe. Simple. Those are That's it. I don't care about the money I make. Mm -hmm. I don't care about if I gain millions of followers. <laughs> for me, it doesn't matter. It's not about followers. It's not about followers. That's, I gained, I gained a lot of followers, you know. And, and, and you said which year, uh, I mean, did you move to Europe? To Europe I, at 17. So it was 2020. I 2020. Moved. 2020, I moved. Yeah. So you've been there uh, until, until now. Until now. So four years. Now you've moved from Switzerland to, to, to UK. UK now. Yeah. Okay. So how has it been uh, for the time that you've been there? Where, in the UK? Yes, or? the UK now. Um, it's, like I said in the beginning, it's, this is probably the, the hardest uh, period for me because I was injured and I was out for eight months. Mm -hmm. I had surgery on my foot. Yeah. And for me, I was trying to find a team again. Mm. And being injured for eight months, you try and come back, you, you barely have any, mm. any opportunity. Very no true. one trusts you. Mm -hmm. I had two months to get fit, football fit. And um, I, I give great thanks to, to Marvelous Makamba mm -hmm. as well. Oh, Marvelous. Uh, yeah, he's, he's like my big brother. He's my role model. He's my oh, inspiration. Nice. And um, I even remember the first time we met, it was through Bill mm -hmm. Antonio. Oh, Bill Antonio, yeah. Uh, we got on a call. And I was like starstruck, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't speak. It's like Marvis Nakamba is the biggest football player from Zim. Exactly. And I remember I got his number and we spoke and I, I went to the UK for holiday and I messaged him out of the blue just to say like, bro, I'm, can I come meet you? Yeah. He said, come bro, come to Birmingham, come. Wow. And I, I went there. He's Apple, you know. And he, he picked me up. Mm -hmm. We spent the whole day together. And mm -hmm. this is Marvis Nakamba, a guy, wow. he's never met me. He doesn't wow. know who I am. It's the first time. First time. We had lunch. We spoke. And since then, we, we've, we've had a good relationship and wow. we've, we've carried on going. Um, mm -hmm. And he had a, obviously a huge injury with his knee. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd phoned him after my surgery and I said, bro, you know, I have the surgery. I don't know. I think that's it for me. I think mm -hmm. football's finished. And he said, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. Look at me. I, even though I was in the Premier League, yes. everything was flat. Everything yes. was finished. Yes. My, my knee was finished. Mm -hmm. People said I'll never play again. But and look, I'm still playing. He's still playing. So he was a great inspiration for me to carry on going mm -hmm. no matter what. So I did that. You. He motivated me. So mm. I, I carry, and I also did it for all the kids back here because for them, I don't want to say I'm their idol, but these kids look at me like um, like a pathway. They mm -hmm. see, okay, Sebastian's done it through hard work. Yes. Surely we can also do it. Mm. If I give up now, I feel like I'm giving up for all those kids. Yes. Because, you know, I've been advocating this hard work, hard work beats talent, mm -hmm. all those stuff. If I just give up now, then all these guys are going to say, Ka, so what mm -hmm. about us? Exactly. So for me, it's, it's, I don't feel pressure. I don't feel anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing it more for the kids here. The in kids, yeah, yeah. And yeah. The young ones, hey, they need exposure. They them. need exposure. Mm -hmm. And um, with me now becoming a scout and mm -hmm. uh, hopefully becoming an agent in the next year, I'm going to open a, an agency here which is going to bridge that, mm -hmm. that gap from... So you'll be taking uh, uh, kids from Zim to Europe... To Europe. Uh, to play for Man U... Yeah, whichever Man team... City. Man City... Liverpool... <laughs> Liverpool... You know, it, and it's, that's, that's the goal, to, mm -hmm. to take them in and, and... Since you are in the UK, have you established your, your relationship with, uh, with these guys, with these teams? Yeah, these teams? so I've been fortunate enough, because I've been to so many trials, I've, I've developed a lot of contacts, mm -hmm. and I know a lot of people in a lot of clubs now. Yeah. And the biggest thing is bring the right player to the club. Because, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day, I'm sticking my neck out for these yes, guys. Yes, if they yes. mess around, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a big thing, like uh, a lot of the time money can change people a mm -hmm. lot. Yeah. And um, like with me, when I had that ego and I was earning money and yeah. I was now Zim, I was mm. like, I'm the best. Yes. And it, it got, I got humbled very, very quickly because you realize like life comes at you very fast. Mm. As fast as it came, it yeah. can go. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, you know, it's, I just want to, I hope I can bring that bridge. Yes. It's, yeah. So which teams have you played for, you know, that side? So I played for a lot, hey. So in Switzerland, I played for a third division team there. Then I, I was loaned out to a team called FC Kirchberg. Mm -hmm. Then from there, I went to the UK. I was playing for Gateshead. Mm -hmm. Then I played for Newcastle Blue Star, which was like a, a feeder team to Newcastle. To Newcastle. Then I've also played for another team called Wickham. Mm -hmm. Then I, when I went to, when I moved to London, I was training at Sutton United, which mm -hmm. is in League Two. Oh, okay. So I was there for a majority of the time. Mm -hmm. I was also at Dover Athletic, uh, Dartford FC. So mm -hmm. I've been around. Yeah. And um, I don't post a lot about it because for me, I don't really want to. I don't really want to share that part mm -hmm. of it because 
it, it's I guess it's also controversial because I should be sharing my failures. Yeah. But for me, yeah. it, it was it was hard for me to take it on the mm. chin. Like I failed, mm-hmm. and because I had made it, and now all of a sudden I I haven't made it. Mm-hmm. It's like how come I've been at the top of the ladder? Exactly. Now I'm at the bottom again. Exactly. And um, even with all the connections, all the people I know, mm-hmm. I still haven't made it. So a lot of people, I think to myself when I speak to them, they always say like, but bro, you know Nakamba or you know these guys, exactly. you know all the football players mm-hmm. know you, you know all the managers, why aren't you pro yet? Mm-hmm. Because there's more to it than just knowing people. Mm-hmm. There's more to it than talent. There's more to it than the hard work. What, is, what does it take you know, for one to be in that? It, no. it takes, it takes a lot of luck. Mm. It takes, and it, it luck. Take luck. And it takes a lot of belief from someone there. Mm. So you need a coach to believe in you. you need, it's like kind of when you're applying for a job. Yes. The guy needs to believe in you. Mm-hmm. If, if they don't believe in you, you won't have... They, you could be the best player in the world and mm-hmm. they won't take you because exactly. they don't believe in yeah. you. And little do people know, there's politics that side also. Yeah. So there's my deals there with the, the <laughs> players and the coaches. <laughs> so, uh, you, you, so you'll be paying like, you know... I'm not saying that, but... <laughs> There's, there's problems like, there like, as well. Like bribing them? Say, okay, guys, please. I don't know about that. But like, I do know there's a lot of, there's a lot of favoritism mm-hmm. in the UK and a lot of coaches, no parents, mm. managers, no parents, owners, no parents, things yes. like that. Yes. So that's, that's, that's a big so thing. So you're still a midfielder? Yeah, I am. I'm actually a, a wing back now. So wing I play back. wing back, right wing back mm-hmm. or left wing back. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been tough, you know. And so I, you play both left and right? Yeah, both left and right foot. Wow. That's that's my strength, I that's guess. You see now, um, and also I guess I'm a, a utility. That's mm-hmm. what they called me, my yeah. utility player. <laughs> that was my my nickname in the under twenty because I could yes. play everywhere. Okay, but um, yeah, it's it's tough. You know, the football world is a very ugly world, and um, I won't lie, I've fallen out of love for it. Mm-hmm. I hate playing football. That it's crazy to say it, but I hate physically playing mm-hmm. football. It's turned into more of a job than a love or a passion. Yeah. And it's it's just yeah it's tough it's super tough and I wouldn't advise people to go into it if mm-hmm. I'm honest it's mm-hmm. it's mentally it's draining physically yeah. it's draining yes socially it's draining mm-hmm. you know so and you know earlier on I mentioned that uh, in, in my introduction I, I mentioned that uh, you are a man on a mission yeah so what drove me to that conclusion is the love you have you know for young footballers in mm-hmm. high density suburbs uh, <laughs> tell me Sebastian you know what motivated you you know to help the youths. In the ghetto. Yes, I I understand. You mentioned something about it. You what was the name of that guy from Hillary? The Hillary. Yeah. You know. You know what really motivated you? So what? To what happened, others as well, not yeah. only Hillary. What happened in the beginning was the way it started. This whole thing started was I was in England and I I was I saw these guys throwing away their boots, mm. fresh boots. Maybe just the the laces were off or something. Exactly. They throw them away. So I started collecting those boots from mm. the dustbin. Oh yeah. And from, I the came, from the dustbin. I collected from the dustbin. And I went to each club. I said, guys, let me take your boots that you're not using. Let me take the old kids. And then I remember I came here and I went to Alois Bungera's Academy, yeah, Alban Alois. Academy. Yes. And I donated a kit. And the happiness it brought mm-hmm. there. And Alban Academy was in a small area, hidden away. And there was talent there. Mm. I said, ah, come on. How come I've never seen this boy play? Exactly. And I've, I've played football mm-hmm. in Zim for 17 years. Yes. I've seen everybody. Trust me, I know everyone in football. Mm. How come mm. I don't know this boy? Exactly. And I, it got me thinking like, okay, let me start going around. Let me start seeing where talent is. Then I went to Goromonzi. Yeah. I went to Kwazana. And then I saw DZ and Mbare. Yeah. And those two. DZ and Mbare. And Otamba Bora. Otamba Bora. Oh. They've got skills for for days. Yeah. Those guys can play football. Uh-huh. And I remember it was uh, I, I hosted a tournament because mm-hmm. I said, look, I'm tired of these same ACs, legends, exactly, whatever. Exactly. It's good to have them, but we mm-hmm. need these new guys to new come guys, up. Yeah. And when you also when you look at like the under 17, under 15, under 18, mm-hmm. whatever, national team, up to 23s, mm-hmm. it's the same people coming each time. Yes, you'll have one or two difference, but it's the same people being called mm. up. And that's because they've got the exposure yeah. and they're good. That's the truth. They're mm. good and they have the exposure. Exactly. But these kids also don't have exposure. Mm-hmm. So I remember when I, I had my first tournament, I think it was in DZ, I had five or six teams. Mm. And it was just amazing the way that these guys played. And that's what drove me to it. I was mm-hmm. like, look, these guys need this opportunity. Exactly. And 
the biggest issue I saw when I was there and I was speaking to the coaches was these guys have to travel far because mm. during the school season when they're at school, they can't play football because they have to travel. Because oh, yeah. a lot of the kids, for example, if they're at DZ or they go to school in Hatcliffe or something mm-hmm. like that, Oh yeah. then they have to travel back to DZ. By the time mm. they come home, it's five o'clock, yeah, it's finished. Yeah, it's just, yeah. So what I've done is I've partnered with schools in the area mm-hmm. and, and academies in the area. So for example, Mbare High mm-hmm. and... Uh, I think it's called Inter Harare. The, the so you, you, you've partnered with Itambari High. And then Inter Harare, the football academy. Oh. I've partnered with them. So Hillary and about four other boys, mm-hmm. I sponsored them to go to Mbari High. And from there, they finish school at uh, three o'clock and mm-hmm. they can walk to the, the football pitch. Oh, wow. wow. So that's, that's what I've done. And I've, I've done, I'm going to do more and more of this. And mm-hmm. I, I've actually got a huge project coming up in January. In January. Yeah. Um, and if you want, you should actually come. I'll definitely will come. come. I'm going Why to not? do Yeah, I'm going to I the will. area. You'll come, 100%. <laughs> yeah. And um, I'm going to give kids. Mm-hmm. And I'm also going to coach the coaches. Oh. And I'm going to coach the kids. You coach the coaches? I want to give them new knowledge. Mm. Because one of the biggest things, you know, there's that saying, Guti, you give a, a, fi- a fisherman a fish or something. Exactly. I don't know how to say it, but... <laughs> yeah. You, you, give the, the you teach a man to fish, to fish he'll yes. eat forever. If you give a man mm-hmm. a fish, he'll eat for a day. Yeah. So that's the sort of thing. I don't want to just go and give them something. Mm-hmm. I want to go something lasting, lasting mm-hmm. impression. Because I'm, I'm also doing my coaching mm-hmm. licenses, I'm going to be able to give knowledge to the coaches mm-hmm. and they can now develop the players to even better standards. Mm-hmm. So when I'm going to go there, I'm going to coach the kids, tell the coaches, this is how you should coach. These mm-hmm. are the new systems. Yeah. Because yes, the CAF workshops are good here. I've never been to one, so I can't, yeah. I can't say. Mm-hmm. But every year I come back I see the same things, the same drills, mm. the same everything, the mm. same way of football. It hasn't changed. The grassroots football has not changed. Mm-hmm. Only now they've done this uh, school's championship I saw. Yeah. And that's a great thing. It's the first time they've ever done it. The school's champion. I've, I've been in Zimbabwe in, uh, 18 years, 17 mm-hmm. years. They've never done that before. We had under 17 national mm-hmm. team, under yeah. 20, and that's it. So it's now a new thing. It's a new thing. This are, are you going to support the initiative? 100%. Mm. 100%. Because it, it's supporting grassroots yes, football. Yes. And school boys I'm, I'm 100% there so you've been hosting those uh, you know tournaments uh, in Barrett or let's say yeah. Komabuku you named them uh, all in the name of uplifting young players yeah. and we applaud you for that you know mm-hmm. uh, well done and uh, how has been the experience so far and how long have you been doing it so I've been doing it publicly mm-hmm. for three years but I can I, I think I've been going back since 14 years old I've been giving back to the community oh, wow. Wow. I just never used to use it socially. Mm-hmm. And the reason, a lot of people say, oh, you just use it to get followers or likes or whatever. No, the reason I do it is because these videos gain a lot of traction mm-hmm. and yeah. a lot of eyes, a lot of important people follow me mm-hmm. and they can see what I'm doing. It's just a little bit and it's bringing so much joy yes. and happiness. Yes. So yes. imagine if everybody just does their little bit. Mm-hmm. Imagine the people who follow me just all do it or they all support it. Yeah. That's, it can bring massive, massive game to Very the grassroots. True. Very true. And I feel like I've been a little bit of a pioneer for the grassroots mm-hmm. football because I've spoken to the heads of, of Zifa, of the PSL and yeah. stuff. They know who I am. Even mm-hmm. um, the Zimbabwe professional They know league, you not as a player. They know me as a player mm-hmm. and also as the, as the advocate for grassroots. Mm. So even with the FUS, the Footballers Union Zimbabwe, I know the guys there as well. And I've tried to connect all of them together mm-hmm. to say, look guys, The next generation of footballers is coming. Mm-hmm. We can't disregard them. Yes. My generation, unfortunately, we were two years banned. Mm-hmm. So I, I never got to play under 23. Mm-hmm. I played under 20 and under I missed 20, that yes. under 23s. Mm-hmm. Now it's senior team. Are you going to play for the senior team? Uh, hopefully. Mm. I'm, I'm going to work for it. I'm hoping in June I'll be called June. up for the qualifiers. Wow. That's going to be something. For the national team. Mm-hmm. I'd be so happy to see you on the pitch. That'll be amazing. I'll be very, very, very happy. So, you know, if asked, you know, a question, mm. what does football mean to you? What would be your your response? Jeez, that's a tough question. <laughs> football to me. Football, honestly, I can give in one word. It's life. It's my life. Mm. There's, for for my whole life, everybody has related football with Sebastian. Mm-hmm. There's no, I haven't been related with anything else. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's, it's my life. It's my passion. It's my, it's my goal. Mm-hmm. That, that's it, my goal. And a lot of people say to me like, oh, 
some of your teammates have made it. How come you yeah, don't make yeah, it? Yeah. A lot of the newspaper try to get me to mm. talk bad about my teammates. Yes. I've also made it. Bill made it. I also made it. Yes. He, yes. Because I'm his teammate mm-hmm. and I'm supporting him, yeah. I've made it with him. Mm. I don't care, even if I'm not playing. Yeah. Munasha Garananga playing for Sheriff Tarispo. Yes. We played on the same pitch. Wow. That's a great achievement for me. Yeah. I've played a, played with a guy who's playing against Lukaku. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. I'm uplifting them. Great yes. for them. I'm never yes. going to talk bad about people yes. who are who are grafting and making it. Because in Zim, that's the biggest issue again. Mm-hmm. And this might be a bit controversial, but people are very jealous of people here. And they don't want you to see people so? succeed. People here, like, it's it's hard in the in the sense that, like, when you get to the level of trying to make it, mm-hmm. And they, there's a select few, and someone gets selected and they don't. Mm-hmm. The first thing people will say is, "Oh, he paid, mm-hmm. or he did this." Oh, yes. I remember when I made the national team. Mm-hmm. The first article came out saying, "Oh, I was involved with Kirsty Coventry or something like that." Oh, and I had asked her to put me in the team. Oh, I didn't even know. But do you guys talk? Me and Kirsty Coventry mm-hmm. only after I only met Kirsty two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah, 2021 after Kosafa. <gasps> I didn't even. I didn't so even, why were they linking you to Kirsty? Because we're white. Oh, because I'm oh, white, oh. they automatically assumed oh, he must have been connected oh. there. So for me, like, there's there's this thing, there's this stigma of people like they can't accept that people can naturally make it mm-hmm. good, mm-hmm. and that's what I'm trying to show. Like, Bill made it 100% legit. Mm-hmm. Munasha made it 100% legit. Yeah. I made it 100% legit. Mm-hmm. Yes, right now I'm not playing for a club and I'm struggling to find it. And I'll yeah. be honest with it, mm-hmm. I'm struggling, but I'm still gonna work hard. But I'm never gonna talk badly about them because they've exactly, made it. Exactly. You know, and I actually look up to them now. Mm-hmm. I respect them. They've they're doing something I wish to do. Mm-hmm. So th- that's the biggest problem here is like also in the in the social media scene, everything's built off controversy. Mm-hmm. You know, like we could make a viral clip now. I could just get up and walk off the podcast exactly. and it'll go viral because exactly. they'll say, Why did he walk off the podcast? Mm. And the the virality is what's killing people in Zim and what's killing artists mm. as well. And that's one thing, like, if you see, there's always controversy within artists. Yeah. Whenever they're releasing an album or something, there's always something to do with controversy. Controversy, there. yes, yes, and sure. Yes, they so say controversy sells. That's the thing. I was about <laughs> to say that. So controversy sells, yeah. but we shouldn't depend on it. Mm-hmm. People should also be able to naturally just show what they're mm-hmm. doing. Mm-hmm. And it, it's tough, you know, it, it's Very super true. tough. Mm-hmm. And to break it as an artist or as an athlete... It's probably the hardest thing you can mm. choose. It's the hardest profession, in my opinion. So, you know, uh, it takes uh, wisdom and someone mm. with empathy, you know, to know that you can uplift others uh, with the links and connections you have. How many youths, you know, have you assisted so far? So, uh, oh, I could Do say... you know maybe the number? I think about... I've helped, I think, more than 30 or 40 kids wow. through school. 30? Yeah. Or, and then... Through my tournaments, I guess you could even put the huge number because mm-hmm. there's, because when whenever I host tournaments, I also have scouts coming mm-hmm. and I record all the videos okay. and I send them out. Yes. So to make like I haven't made any players go pro yet, mm-hmm. but because they're all young, they're exactly. all 13, 14. Oh, but yeah. Hillary, he's been um, offered trials at FC Platinum for their youth team. Okay. Which is massive. Yes, true. You know, boy from Barrett to go mm-hmm. FC Platinum. So those are the. At, at 16 years old, that's when I'm going to push these guys mm. to, to start going to train yes, with yeah. the, the big teams. And uh, in the next coming years, there'll be huge success stories. There'll mm-hmm. be 10 or 15, I'm telling you, that wow. will. And I'm going to make sure that I'm going to make it. And, um, I mean, is it uh, out of your pocket, your own pockets, or there are other people involved? No? Yeah, no, it's actually my own pocket. So everything I've been doing, all the sponsorship, all the kits, everything has been... You must be rich, my guy. Ah, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do my deals here and there. And then. Exactly. But um, it, it's tough because what's crazy is I'll go to sponsors. It's mm-hmm. not like I haven't tried. Okay. Um, And all the money that I've been using, obviously it's my own money, but it's from what I've made from football. Mm-hmm. So it's not my parents' money. It's my salary, essentially, from football. Yeah. I've always put a percentage to the side for my foundation. Mm. And it will be. It's very strange, though. I've approached many big, many big companies mm-hmm. in Zim, and a lot of them are very. They don't really like to help. Yeah, yeah. They, it's uh, not that they don't like to help. They like to help, but they're so tied up mm-hmm. with who they can help and yes. how they help because yes. Yes. everyone's looking for help in mm-hmm. Zim. So I'm hoping that I can build up a better network of foreign mm-hmm. investors. So okay. if I need people from the international to mm-hmm. come and help in Zim. I think that would be perfect. Mm-hmm. That, that's going to be... But I think it's... Do, but do you think it's that, it's that easy? No. 
Ah, it's very hard. <laughs> <laughs> to bring the international it's, investors? It's super hard because because of this stigma and this this brand Africa mm-hmm. has of yeah. like corruption mm-hmm. and uh, age cheating and all that yes. stuff, they don't trust. Mm. And one of my, my big projects that I'm hoping to do is I'm trying to bring a scouting network to an automated scouting network mm-hmm. to Zimbabwe, to the PSL. Yeah. And that's something I have to go discuss with the mm. PSL themselves. Oh, yes. yes, Where that we can we can legitify the, I don't know if that's a word, mm-hmm. legitify or <laughs> we can make make the statistics used mm-hmm. real. Like there's not going to be any cheating. So mm-hmm. one of the biggest thing, I remember speaking to one of the coaches in the UK, they said, we love African players. They're the hardest working. But we once got a guy who said he played eight games and scored 60 goals. Mm-hmm. How, how do we have proof? Yeah. There's no video. There's mm-hmm. no statistics. How, how are we going to quantify and say this is real? Mm-hmm. So that's something I want to bring to Zim to make sure that the statistics we have and the videos we have yeah. can be sent to Europe and have an open platform. Oh, yes. And it's, it's a big project and I think it, it can be worthwhile, the investment. Mm-hmm. Because the only other African team that does it is the Moroccan League. Oh, Moroccan League. And look at Morocco. Under-17 World Cup semi-final. World Cup semi-final. Wow. And it's... Under-17. Under-17, they went to the World Cup semi-final. And it's not a surprise. Because they're using these AI tools. They're Mm. using these technologies to to boost themselves. Yeah. And that's what I want to bring to them. I want to be the guy who brings that technology Mm. from Europe or the West Mm -hmm. to them. And make us not go to South Africa. That's very powerful. You know, there are some words uh, you uttered in an interview with a publication in the court. You said, um, I have been to Belgium, Czech Republic, and Turkey. I've played against uh, some English teams like Sunderland, and I can tell you our boys are better than them. Yeah. Close court. So from what I've just read, you know, um, what is lacking from our boys uh, since you say they are better compared to footballers in the you know, countries you've been, yeah. you've, you've been to. It's true. Uh, like, uh, no word of a lie. I've played against guys. The only thing I can say is the tactical intelligence. Mm-hmm. And that comes through through playing with coaches who know tactical intelligence. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, the grassroots coaches don't have that because they were never exposed to it. Mm. So the big coaches, like, for example, the Mapezas, the Indirayas, yes, yes. they will have it, the Britos. Mm-hmm. They will have it because they've been exposed to the European way. Yes. And yes. It, it really does suck that we as Africans, we always have to go to Europe to look for the, the better things. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be like that. We shouldn't have to, to search for it. But unfortunately, we have to. Yeah. So, like, like the court said, I've played everywhere. Honestly, yeah. I've played in so many places. And the, the individual talent, player by player, mm-hmm. Zim, I think, pound for pound is the best. Serious. Really, it is. Team-wise, when they come together in team, that's where the problems arise. Mm-hmm. Because they don't have that tactical intelligence. They don't know like from a corner kick, mm-hmm. not once ever in my 17 years did we ever practice corner kicks. Mm. Sometimes in Europe, you have a whole session just with free kicks and corners. Corner kicks. Just corner Sessions. kicks. Sessions. Just a session. How to score from corners. Here's, just look for the tallest guy and cross mm-hmm. it to him. Mm-hmm. Even from kickoff, there's a lot of tactical things that people don't understand. And that's what I want to bring to mm-hmm. these grassroots guys yeah. with the knowledge I'm going to yes. uh, bring from my coaching is I'm going to teach them from corners, you know, mm-hmm. corners should be as easy as a free kick or a penalty to score. Wow, wow. <laughs> and even if we could but do that on the PSL. It must be tough. A corner, from a corner. From a corner, it's tough, but it, it's possible mm-hmm. and it can work. Yeah. So it's, that's the biggest thing is that exposure to the training. Mm-hmm. Facilities, I could say, is a little bit, mm-hmm. but here we've got, we've got okay facilities. Yes. Obviously, some of the boys play on dust, so <laughs> they, they, when they go to grass, it's perfect for them. But for our facilities, you know, they've been condemned, you know, yeah. of lights by the, what, what does it call it? The CAF. Is it yeah. CAF? No, no, not CAF. Oh, the FIFA, the, the FIFA, FIFA band. Yeah. That was tough as well. You see now. It is yeah, just that was crazy. Taking us back. So, uh, what good would you point at, um, you know, when it comes to our Zimbabwean football, the Warriors, ETC? So, with the Warriors, you know, I think this is the golden generation we have right mm-hmm. now. With young players from the local league yeah. and internationally, mm-hmm. and the, the seniors, the likes of Nakamba, mm-hmm. Kadewere, Munetsi, Hadebe, those guys, they're the, they're the core. Mm-hmm. They're the base of it. Yeah. And we just have to build on top of it. And I hope, I hope that I've said this many times that this golden generation doesn't go to waste or doesn't mm-hmm. fail because it's so important for us to to take advantage of it right exactly. now. Exactly. Especially now because we've got this under 15, mm-hmm. like the school's championship. Mm-hmm. It, 
it's looking like we're going in the right direction. And I guess the ban was somewhat positive because mm-hmm. we came out on top. Yes. But it also, it it really hurt a lot of people, mm-hmm. you know, like I know guys who haven't played football now since Kosafa. Yes. That's f- going on four years. Yeah. So it's like career ending. Career ending. And mm. it's, it's, it's so tough for them. Mm-hmm. Um, but whatever, Zifa is doing a great job now. The PSL is doing a great thing mm-hmm. now with the league. Um, I feel like there should be youth league. That's the next big step. Oh, the youth league? Youth league. Where, for example, each team must have an academy. Dynamo's mm-hmm. academy. Oh, FC yes. Platinum academy. Yes. And they yes. play each other as well. Mm-hmm. Like they do in Europe. Because... There's, there's Manchester United Youth League, exactly. there's uh, Chelsea. But, but the problem is you can't expect kids who are playing academy football mm-hmm. at uh, Prince Edward or at Legends or at Aces to now go to the Premier League. Mm. Men's football is very tough. Yeah. You know, and um, hopefully, you know, it's good that we have like the third division and the second division. Yes, yes. But I think those divisions, they're, they're full of older guys and it mm-hmm. shouldn't be older guys. It should be the youth playing. Yes. So I think they should change it and mm-hmm. put like an age restriction to yeah. the, the lower divisions mm-hmm. so that it's younger players getting exposure against mm, men. I, I understand. And, uh, you know, why are we always looked down upon, you know, in, in football as a country? Uh, we are treated, you know, um, as people who know nothing about yeah. football. Yet, we have produced the likes of uh, Nakamba, the Hadebers, you know, and... Um, and uh, mm. yeah. them. So what could you represent out there, you know, in in Europe, in other countries? Yeah. Yet we are sidelined. Why is that so? I think it's because of the journey these guys took. And it's obviously through South Africa. That's why. Because everyone thinks all these Zim can't produce these players. Mm-hmm. They're saying that they got produced in South Africa. Mm-hmm. I've had conversations with Nakambo, Kadewere, because these are all my older brothers yeah. essentially. They've all told me that Zim was probably the hardest time for them because it built character. Mm. If we can eliminate that, that journey of going to SA, that will, will shed light on Zim as a, as a country mm-hmm. like Senegal yeah. or like Morocco or Nigeria who produce top talent. Because mm-hmm. Zim produces top talent. We've got players everywhere. Exactly. And you know, we've got a lot of diaspora kids as well who mm-hmm. play for other nations. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's... there's hundreds in the UK who play for England or who play for Wales. Like Zemura. Jordan Zemura. Exactly. Rusheshe, Tivonga mm-hmm. Rusheshe. Oh, Rusheshe, yeah. He used to play for Wales mm. and then he went for the senior national team for wow. Wales. Wow. There's so many Zimbabweans mm-hmm. in the UK, just in the UK, that want to play for Zim, but mm-hmm. they, they can't because they, they went to England or something. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. now imagine all of those guys in history as well yeah. went to play for Zim. We would mm. be at the World Cup. You yeah. know? So for the teams, you know, you've been, uh, you've played for how different are they from Zimbabwean Warriors team? The Warriors um, was was probably the best coaching I've received in Zim because we had some of the top coaches. We had mm-hmm. Coach Sonray, who was at his peak with mm-hmm. Dynamos, or he's still at his peak. He's a, one of the best coaches I've ever had. Mm-hmm. Um, his coaching style was very similar to Europe, mm-hmm. very similar to Belgium as well. And I think that's because he was in Belgium. Yeah. So with, with Coach Tondray, it was it was really... Very flow, fluid, mm-hmm. very easy. The biggest thing, again, is just that tactical side. Unfortunately, yeah, uh, they like to run. Mm. Hey, uh, they like to run. <laughs> they like to run. They like to run. So that's I, one I've thing. I've noticed that, you know, European football is very fast. Yeah, <laughs> passing fast. Fast. Here we just like keep the ball for like 10, 10 seconds. Yeah. Why, why are you it's, doing the ball? Just pass it. That's, that's the problem. And that's a lot of things. That's why a lot of them will struggle when mm-hmm. they go to Europe because they hold the ball for too long and mm-hmm. they'll lose it. Yeah. So they need to, here they need to start integrating more of that mm-hmm. tactical tiki-taka sort of exactly. football. Yeah. Not just long balls mm-hmm. on the wing, trying to find a big striker. Mm-hmm. It's, it doesn't, those days are gone, you know. Mm-hmm. Even of formations, you know. Formations are very important now. Yeah. Having like inverted wingers, like mm-hmm. wing backs and stuff, playing yeah. with three at the back or five mm-hmm. at the back. It's very important, but mm-hmm. we need to, it's, it, slowly it will come, but mm-hmm. I hope it comes soon. Yeah. And I, I feel like what we should do, sort of like what South Africa have done, you know, like Kaiser Chiefs have played against Manchester United. Mm-hmm. We, I don't think Zim local teams have ever played against any international teams. Maybe, maybe, uh, I, I remember they played against... Um, I know Zimbabwe played Brazil. Ba- Barcelona. Barcelona. Uh, legends. Legends. <laughs> Barcelona legends. Yes. How long ago was that? Now? Oh, uh. So now imagine we get like the likes of 
maybe not even a big team like a Bournemouth or yeah. Aston Villa. Yes, yes. Uh, to play against Dynamo mm-hmm. or to play against FC Platinum mm-hmm. or Highlanders. Yeah. They'll see, okay, wow. One, it will give exposure to the guys, to mm-hmm. these teams. Yeah. Two, it will shed light for the international, for them to see, okay, mm-hmm. Aston Villa's playing in Zim. Yeah, yeah. And they lost, for exactly. example. Imagine they lose. Yes, yes. People yes. say, oh, Zimbabwe is no, now a good. talent hub. Mm. So we need more international exposure. And uh, do you think uh, we'll ever make it to the top? I feel like this is our best opportunity to make it to the World Cup. Um, this one? This one, yeah. Because wh- how it's set up right now with the two draws against mm-hmm. Rwanda and Nigeria, I think we sit third in the log. Mm-hmm. If we win our next games... And Nigeria lose. Because mm-hmm. Nigeria is the one that everyone's worried about. Yes, yes. If Nigeria lose, I feel like we have the capacity, especially if we have the home games mm-hmm. here. Yeah. Because I don't know, it was a bit weird for me to see the Warriors playing a home game in, in Rwanda. Rwanda. Yeah. So if we're able to to play at national sports, or Rufaro, mm-hmm. or be it at... With, the, uh, with, with supporters. With supporters. No. Yeah. I feel that can push us to over the edge. Mm-hmm. If we keep drawing the games away and winning at home, because mm-hmm. I think it's two teams from each group that go through... No, it's one team from each group, okay. and the, the the highest ranked second mm-hmm. place goes into a tournament. Yeah. Goes into like the international tournament, mm-hmm. or whatever. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's my, that must be tough. You know, yeah. I don't I don't know what we are going to do uh, for us to win, but we need to win. Yeah, I, I think I think we can. Yeah. Um, and I feel like as long as our our seniors stay with us. Mm-hmm. And they stick in with it. Yeah. And they, they carry on. And there's no politics behind it. It should be good. So do you have plans for, I mean, of starting your own club, you know, where you you, you recruit uh, the young ones um, that are passionate about uh, football? Yeah. So hopefully when I become a bit older and I've accumulated more money because uh, all my money is going to the foundation. Oh, now. Also, oh, um, you've started your own foundation. Yeah. So that's... it's, it's in Zimbabwe. Yeah. It's my own found, it's my foundation. Mm. It's not really public. It's just... It's sort of under my own brand. Oh, yes. Um, so, yeah. What, what is it called? Just Sebastian Summerfield Foundation. Okay. On Instagram, it's just Sebastian Summerfield, mm-hmm. my Instagram. Yeah. Uh, that's where I post everything. Because mm-hmm. um, a lot of people always tell me, oh, you should separate your foundation from you. But it's not because I am it. You yeah. know, I am yeah. the guy who does it. Exactly. It, it's me on the ground. Mm-hmm. So, if I post it, then it it's, doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, it's whatever. Those who might not know of someone who is talented in football, but uh, like... Uh, Exposure, or those who might know someone. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, 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 I need that talent, but at like that exposure, how can they get in touch uh, with you, Sebastian? So that's a really, really cool thing. Um, you can DM me on Instagram, and mm-hmm. I answer everybody. Mm-hmm. There's not one person I don't answer on Instagram. Mm. I answer every single person because I know how it feels to DM someone who's important exactly. or influencer and, and not get the answer. Yes, yes. Um, uh, and this actually brings me to uh, quite a nice story with uh, the late Gary Mapanzura. Mm-hmm. Uh, back in the day, I think three, four years ago, he was. I, I messaged him once, and he was the only person who was verified and who was like big in Zim mm, who answered me. Yes, and that was the biggest eye opener for me because I was like, wow, he's he's got the world mm. Zim at his feet. Yes. he can do whatever he wants, mm-hmm. and he answered me. So, whoever wants to be in touch with me, even when I'm in Zim, if I come to any of my tournaments, come message me on Instagram. I'm always happy to meet up mm-hmm. with people. The best way to contact me is through Instagram because yeah. I run my Instagram myself. Oh yes, um, I do have a, a PR team though mm-hmm. as well that go through that yes. filter because sometimes I do get some crazy mm-hmm. messages. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, ah, I wanted to know about those crazy <laughs> messages. those those crazy messages. Yeah. Some of those messages are a bit mm-hmm. wild, but yeah. Um, yeah, send me a message on Instagram and. If I don't answer within the first few days, I'll always get back because mm-hmm. I do have a lot of messages. Yeah, exactly, because I, I, I've noticed you've got uh, 30,000 followers on yeah. Instagram. So you're like, oh. Yeah, no, and I'm, I'm very grateful for every single one of my followers. Mm-hmm. And for me, like I said, they're not, for me, they're not my followers. It's a community. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm my own follower as well. Yeah. So whoever I have on Instagram, it's a community. Mm-hmm. So as followers, we're going to work together. Mm-hmm. It's not like you guys are following me. I'm going to follow you. If you have something to say yeah, exactly. or I can do better, mm-hmm. let me know. Message me. Tell yes. me, Sebastian, I think you should do this with your academy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll take it on board. I'm not wow. one to to say I know everything because mm-hmm. I don't. Exactly. I, I'm a young guy. I'm only 21. I don't know about the world. Mm-hmm. I don't know mm-hmm. what happens. Mm-hmm. And I'm so grateful for people like you who, yeah. who give me the opportunity to mm-hmm. come on your podcast and speak to people, Yes. to the, the guys at the, the newspapers because mm-hmm. they are also 
very helpful to me. Mm-hmm. Um, all these, the new, everyone in Zim is very, very helpful to me. Yes. And they want to see me grow. Mm-hmm. And they want to see the grassroots growth. So as I grow, grassroots grows. Exactly, essentially. exactly. That's very true. So, yeah. Thank you so much for, for coming, my brother. Ah, it was uh, amazing. Sebastian Summerfield. So next time I, uh, when I come to UK, I'll, I'll definitely yeah, see you. you let me know. Uh, I'll be in UK very soon. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to do a few shows in the UK. Amazing. Yeah. Maybe so we'll I, do one in UK again. I did. Why, why not? Why <laughs> not? <laughs> okay, so your parting remarks before you go. Maybe uh, I wanted to ask something. Okay, who is your favorite player right now in Zim? In Zim? Frank Makarati. Oh, yeah, he's my, he's a good friend of mine as okay, well. Okay, okay. Um, so maybe you're biased. I'm a bit biased. God knows <laughs> is also my, my guy. But um, there's a lot of talent that mm. are, are gonna gonna go through. And mm-hmm. um, I think Tando, Tando from FC Platinum, okay. he was at under 20, he never made it mm-hmm. to the final team. He's gonna be the next big star, mm. in my opinion, Tando. Okay. Um, Junior Makunike from mm-hmm. Dynamos. Oh, yes. But if I was to choose one favorite, favorite player from Zim, Hey, yeah, it's on the spot. It has to be a Dynamo's player, of course. Because <laughs> uh, they're buried for life. Uh-huh. Probably, yeah, I would say Frank. Mm-hmm. Frank. Frank Makarati, yeah. Mm. For me, Frank is a top, top player. Now, before you go, you know, um, I'm advocating for the youth not yeah. to stop drug abuse. Mm. So, um, I would really want to hear something, I mean, from mm. you. Uh, what's your take on drug abuse? And what, do you, what, what message do you have, you yeah. know, for the, our youths uh, watching out there? Yeah, I mean, so for you guys who are watching right now, this is directly to you. <laughs> so I'm speaking to you now. Exactly. I'm not talking to Ola anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I understand how sometimes in life you'll be put in situations where you feel like that's the only way. You know, sometimes life is going to beat you down to the ground. It's going to beat you until you feel like you can't move. But those are the moments where you're the strongest. And those are the moments where you need to have that self-belief and say, no, I'm stronger than anything that's come against me. Mm. Drugs, alcohol, smoking, tobacco, all of those things. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a temporary getaway. It's not going to level you up. You getting yourself up, dusting yourself off, working hard, believing in yourself, helping your family, connecting with people that are like-minded yeah. is what you need. Drugs are... are I'm not, I'm going to say they're always going to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always going to be, and it it sucks that people depend on them. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's you versus you. Don't try to follow other people's stories. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think where the drug problem comes is kids trying to follow their friends. Mm, Peer pressure. Peer pressure. And I've, I've tried, people have tried to get me to do it. Oh, serious. A hundred percent. And I've, I've always said, no, I'll never do it. Mm -hmm. But like my, my last remark, I guess is hard work beats talent when Mm -hmm. talent doesn't work hard. Wow. That's that's it. So be so yourself. Powerful. Follow your own journey. Whatever the world is your oyster. Never feel like you're in a box. Mm-hmm. And ha. So profound coming from uh, Sabasen Summerfield here on the Ola Seven podcast. You're the biggest podcast show in the land, and I'm sure you can all attest. Ah, it is the biggest show. <laughs> it is. It is. Okay. So guys, until next time, thank you so much for watching to our viewers, our sponsors. You know, thank you so much, guys, for the support. In the comment section, then you go and you go find out what you say about comments. I welcome. And also, you guys, you should also understand that we are growing. But exactly, so I'm not thinking that you get to the issues. I did all up a gadriza, trotter gadriza, all up a so she got this was she show you one hashtag show you nika. Thank you so much for watching, but don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also our Facebook page at DJ Ola7. Kwanas, bye bye. Have a good night. From as little as $20, your Christmas and New Year's could be filled with entertainment. We provide free to air decoders, smart TVs with built in satellite receivers, tech support for all our products second to none. Find us in Harare, Mutare, and Mashingo. For more information, WhatsApp us on the numbers appearing on screen now. Kesson Electronics, grab yours today.